Thanks, and thanks everybody. Welcome. Uh, here we are, you know, post coffee break, so hopefully you're all caffeinated and full of energy. I know I'm uh, a bit nervous myself. Um, despite this being, I think I counted, it's the 27th GDC I've been to, and uh, I think I've spoken at the last 20. So I'm, I'm curious how many, I was going to crush my ego, but how many people here have heard me speak at a conference somewhere? Okay, well, enough not to crush my ego, but uh, those of you who don't know me, we've got this wonderful service that Google runs. It's not a game, but I think it's like a search engine or something, so go right ahead and look me up there. Um, I'm the, the chief game designer at Google, which is a wonderful title uh, my boss bestowed on me. Uh, let's not make too much of that. Um, I'm going to talk about looking to the future, and I'm gonna do that by looking to the past. Uh, I have uh, the advantage of, as I've, I've said, being around for a very long time in the games industry. I started making games in 1980 professionally. And uh, it really is not so bad being a, a dinosaur in the games industry. We, we have a lot uh, going for us there. You know, for one thing, if you look back, you know, there was, you know, extinction 65 million years ago, but some of us are still around. I'm going to look even farther back than that. 540 million years ago, there was something called the Cambrian Explosion. And it was shortly, in geological terms, just a very short time after multicellular life started out. And within, you know, this tiny amount of time, it just spread out into all the different weird forms that you're seeing out there. Um, you know, pretty amazing variety of kind of monstrous, you know, and, and pretty cool science fictional looking creatures and everything. And then there was, uh, uh, you know, some sort of event, maybe a, an asteroid, nobody really knows for sure, and many of them died out. Uh, in fact, uh, only one of those many creatures you see there may have been the ancestor of all of us here, uh, and I won't even go into to which one. It's uh, kind of humiliating when you see which one it is. Um, but the fact is that eras rise and fall. In evolution, we've had many things go up and then go down, and you know, over time, it's actually not that different than the cycles that we've seen in the games industry. So uh, what can we learn from that? Well, you know, you look, first of all, at how there were these games that came out, and they were very popular for a while, and then nobody uh, heard of them. I was involved in the arcade industry uh, in the early 80s, and within a uh, course of just one year, we had 90% of our audience just go away. It was, it was really shocking. And realize that this was early enough that there was this sense of, you know, I had people say, see, you know, this profession you think you've, you've taken, it's a little hobby that was hot for a while and now nobody cares about it. And luckily, uh, computer games started taking off and the first Nintendo came out right in the middle of that hole when everybody was saying, oh, it can't possibly work. And of course, things took off again. But, you know, consoles have come and gone. There have been waves of them. Sega was big for a while. And, and uh, you know, got out of the console business. M more recently, it seems that this is go going even faster. We had a huge wave of social games, you know, with 100 million people uh, playing at, at, uh, on, on the same day for some of these games. Numbers that were, were mind-boggling to those of us uh, 20, 30 years ago. The indie movement that is going strong now. Uh, how many of you consider yourself an indie developer? Okay, so it's almost half the audience, and you know, five, ten years ago, that would have been a tiny fraction. It's become a really big thing. Same thing with mobile. Mobile was a niche for many years. I had friends who were struggling with it in, you know, around 2000. Uh, smartphones came out, and it just started to shoot up, and it's still increasing. You know, if you look at the numbers, uh, I have to say, particularly for Android sales, it's just uh, amazing to see what's going on out there. And, of course, tablets are uh, almost a brand new thing by game industry terms, terms and, and just still going up in, in a great way. But that brings us to the, the core of this, which is that uh, there's a bit of a cliche, but the, the Chinese character, Chinese language character for crisis is made up of the symbols for danger and opportunity together. And of course, it's, it's pretty logical when you think about it, but let me break it down in terms of what's going on in our world right now. So 
a lot of dangers. You know, being a dinosaur is pretty exciting, but uh, you know, you can end up like our friend here is outside of the Google offices. Uh, and I, you know, I, I have to be careful about what I say here, but uh, I had a friend who just told me about 10 minutes ago that uh, there's a cartoon that explains that the reason that the T-Rex ended up having those really tiny arms is that it was an early version of Google Glass, and with all the voice commands, he didn't need to use those arms anymore, and that's what happened to him. So hopefully that's not true. Um, you know, for one thing, I think, uh, well, we'll get into that, but having big teeth is uh, kind of a, a good thing too. All right, anyway, a lot of people are wondering, is this the last big console cycle? Are consoles uh, you know, having their, their last heyday? Now, it's been interesting because the sales for the big AAA console games, the, the top one keeps going up and up, particularly when you look at the sales in just you know, like the first 24-hour periods, it's amazing. But lots of things get really big before they go away. A lot of people are very nervous about that. Uh, the social game boom, um, you know, as I said, we had, you know, 50, 100 million monthly, even daily active users. And that's been, you know, it's not, certainly not dead by any uh, account, but it's a very mature market and it's a dangerous one to try and get into right now. Uh, another dangerous area is mobile, which was really wonderful. So many people, you know, even now you can make a, a, a flappy bird and, and do incredibly well, but usually it's the big companies, the, the production uh, costs and values have gone up. I just saw an amazing presentation from um, some of the glue people, and boy, you know, high production values are going to be the norm for a lot of mobile games. It's pretty scary up uh, for, the, for that as well. And business models are causing disruption. You know, free to play really took a lot of us by surprise. Some people have rode that wave up, others have been slow to follow. Uh, digital distribution, same kind of thing, great for a lot of people, terrible for a lot of brick and mortar companies out there. Uh, rentals are causing problems, you know, and boy, imagine, you know, renting a uh, digitally uh, free-to-play game, you know, it's the, the apocalypse coming together. So you never know what's going to happen next. There's also, of course, this amazing increasing range of hardware out there. Uh, in my 35 years or so in the games industry, I've never seen so many different types of platforms, you know, everything, uh, well, I, I won't even get into the, the, the range there. But even as that's a scary thing, there's an opportunity there at the same time. Um, we've never been making more money, you know, as, a, as an industry, it's, it's pretty amazing. And maybe even more importantly than that, it's never been more popular and more widespread. And I mean that both in the, the global sense, you know, we're all over the world now. Uh, there are tiny uh, countries with, you know, one or two million population that have three or four game development uh, companies in them at this point. Very common all over. I just got an invitation two days ago to an African game developer uh, conference in uh, Nigeria uh, this fall. It's just stuff I never would have expected. Uh, at least I think it's a real conference. Now that I say that, I have to check that out. Um, we've also never been so consequential. A lot of the work that I did before coming to Google has been in the serious game space, which uh, is just at the very beginning of the tip of the iceberg of being able to save lives, change people's training and the way that they learn, uh, and just make them happier and healthier in many ways. Um, we've never been so connected uh, in so many ways, uh, even, you know, uh, sometimes almost a, a neuromancer kind of jacked in thing. This is actually from a, a serious game project uh, here in UCSF that uh, Dr. Adam Ghazali uh, got on the cover of Nature with, uh, first time a video game has ever been on the cover of the journal Nature. Um, really exciting stuff going on all over the place. We've never been on so many different devices and screens at once. And that's really, um, uh, you know, just a, 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 an amazing thing uh, for, for those of us who've been around a long time. And some, one of the consequences of this is that there is serious analysis going on. Uh, analytics are something that's really big at Google. You've heard something about that today. If you were here earlier, there, there's some more going on later. Um, and of course, universities are studying games and giving us more information than we've ever had before. So really exciting time. Uh, you have the danger, you have the opportunity, but this causes a lot of anxiety. Where do I go? Where do I get this opportunity? What's the right decision? Okay, I'm not going to give you that answer, not exactly, but I'm going to talk to you about perhaps algorithms that can help you there. Uh, to survive and thrive in times of great change, 
often has been the, the case of, you know, we, the cliche with the dinosaurs, the little mammals came out there and, uh, you know, we and, and, and so many other uh, ecological niches were uh, colonized by that result. Um, that's, you know, kind of a truism of the way evolution works. Um, being flexible and embracing change, moving into these new areas, is often a powerful winning strategy. Certainly there are a lot of the biggest companies out there today that have done that either a long time ago or even quite recently. You know, you think of companies like uh, King, for example, that seemingly came out of nowhere and now are incredibly uh, popular just because they got into the right niche in the right way at the right time. And something that's perhaps the most important takeaway that you can have from this whole talk, I'm talking about evolution, and it's just an analogy. The reality is, with evolution, DNA mutates over millions of years, changes are slow, you can't choose which DNA, well, except maybe some bacteria, some interesting ideas there. But better than bacteria, we can actually make conscious choices about what game ideas to take, what new areas to move into, where to explore. And I think that is probably the single most important thing I can tell you, is that you can pick those ecosystems that you wish to compete in. And Google is here to help you with that. If any of you have been to uh, some of the presentations earlier today, and I see some familiar faces, uh, and we've got some more coming up uh, that are, are just great through the end of the day, you can see that Google has an amazing breadth of this. But that's something you would expect. I mean, think about what Google's into. We, we're known as a search company, but we also are doing all these cloud services that have direct connection to games. Uh, you know, fiber is, is spreading out and getting higher bandwidth into more and more uh, households. Ads are a wonderful way for, to monetize and fuel the development of your games, and we're looking at better and better ways to make the ads uh, more effective for you. And you know, as a game developer, I always look to, to make it non-invasive so that it can actually help the player and, and they can welcome it. Um, Mobile, of course, with Android, we've, we've been doing quite a bit, but we're moving Android, Android into other areas. We've got Chrome on the desktop. Uh, there are uh, you know, TV initiatives. You've seen Android uh, micro consoles out there. Um, we've announced an, an automotive initiative. Uh, just today, there, our, our wearable uh, API was, was uh, discussed online. Lots of new things. Can't talk about the next ones just yet, but you can count on Google for releasing all sorts of really wonderful stuff as it goes on. Um, so what's gonna go on in the future? I can't tell you about any one thing, but I can tell you that there are some solid suggestions that I think will help you. Being open-minded, you know, because it's hard to say where the next hit will come from, the strategy that you need to pursue is think globally, uh, and not just literally globally, but in terms of the whole uh, breadth and depth of this sort of game ecosystem continuum out there. Look for blue oceans, look for areas that are fertile, that are opening up, that seem uh, promising, and also that seem promising for you, that each of you as an individual, for yourself, uh, for a company you may work for, for you know, a mega corporation perhaps, you know, there are all different ranges of that, but what works for you in that sense is where you uh, are going to compete effectively. So I can't answer this because the answer is different for each one of you, but as somebody who survived in this industry since it was radically different, you move from one thing to another, and if you're open to learn and change and thrive, then you're gonna do well with that sort of thing. Being agile and iterative is also a strategy that always works. If you stick with something, you, I have a, an artist friend who had one way of art rendering in the 8-bit days, and he was the best in the world at it, probably still is because nobody does that anymore, and he moved out of art because of that. So if you wanna stay relevant, you have to keep iterating and move around as you need to. So you diversify as much as practical, even if it's just a little bit, but not too much for you. You know, you don't want to become a total generalist, and yet it's amazing over time how many different things you can learn. So those are some of the basic tips. Uh, the last one I want to leave you with is don't bet against the internet. This is something that's been driven home to me quite a bit recently, is that uh, it's not quite pervasive yet. There are places you can go where you're not online or you're not online reliably, like, you know, maybe at a crowded Moscone Center with a bunch of techno nerds next to you but it's getting better and better, and the very fact that you're able to get online at all and that it's getting better each year is something you can uh, bet is going to continue as we go. And finally, you know, let Google help you. We've really been doing a lot in this area. I am a longtime game developer. I can say from now an inside view, it's amazing how much Google is doing with games and, and how involved and committed the company is 
to helping uh, game developers, and I'm looking forward to seeing that continue. So that's my uh, uh, extent of my inspiration. I hope you'll stick around for an afternoon of some great talks, and it, we're rounding up with uh, my, my friend and boss, uh, R.J. Michael, at the end of the day, and you know, stick around, don't miss him. He's always a great show. Uh, thanks very much. This is how you can contact me if you want to get in touch with me later on. And uh, have a good day and a, a great GDC for the next few days. Thank you, everybody.